everyone. It's Friday night. I just got off work and I've got a problem with the avalanche. The water pump went. So um, I've never done a water pump on one of these, the 5.3s. I don't think it'll be that hard. Almost everything on these trucks is pretty easy to do. My goal for tonight is um, just to get it all apart. Uh, and then tomorrow I'll put it all back together with the new water pump. I also have a replacement thermostat and I figured while I'm at it, I will also replace the serpentine belt since um, I've had this now for a few years and I've never changed it. All right, so let me show you what we got to do. All right, so first off, I've got a, uh, an old comforter under there to absorb any spills of coolant and I've got a plastic uh, pan to catch everything. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off. Uh, well, maybe first thing we'll do is we'll take that off because we gotta take this, 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 and then um, I've gotta take the clutch fan off in there. Um, but that's about it. You know, it's mostly just taking a lot of things apart. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off and um, pretty easy. We gotta take these pins out, which will enable us to take these off. Not sure about those, but we'll see. As I said, I, I have not done a water pump on one of these before, but I don't think it'll be all that difficult to do. Pretty difficult to pull it up, and I don't want to break it. Again. Okay. All right, so this whole grill, once you take those pins, take these pins one, two, three out you uh, pull this whole grill off. And don't grab these little ends in this. Try to get it somewhere where you won't break anything, because this is still plastic. And at this point, this truck's 20 years old. I don't have my main toolbox in the workshop yet. <clears throat> it's weird that this is loose. bolts here. Okay, that's exactly. All right, so let me give you a close up. So I'm going to take these out, this uh, this hose has to come off or this hose clamp, 
and that. I gotta get this hose out of the way, and I can get the shroud out. I think there's a couple more yet. Yeah, it looks like there's another bolt down there. Um, so let me work on that, and I will be right back. Remove this hose. Uh, I just used a pair of locking pliers on the clamp. Let's go through. I don't know if this is orange coolant in this. I can't tell. It actually, oddly enough, looks purple. Here. Well, we do, but not at this second. I mean, let's see, see what else I got to do here. Let's get these bolts out now. See, so far, it's been quite easy. I expect the whole job to be easy. Just a lot of steps. drop light on here all right so down here we've got oops, looks like take these guys out Get it so you can see where these are, but there you go. And then one more right there. I don't know that I need to remove the bottom half of the radiator shroud. Well, let's see. Loosen it from that and get the flathead. Your truck would likely not have this. everything back where it came from because I expect there's going to be a lot of parts all right, all right. And there we have our clutch fan that's our next big step now sometimes you get lucky and these clutch fans come right off so you gotta get on this not right there and Sometimes you just gotta give it a whack and it comes off. So I'm leaving the belt on for now. Don't take, don't be in a hurry to get your belt off. Uh, still hoping I find that wrench that I dropped down there a couple years ago. Don't see it. But uh, okay, so I'm gonna do the clutch fan next. 
And I just gotta get the belt off. And I think I'm gonna take the tensioner off. I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. First, I'm gonna see if this big Craftsman fits. It fits on the avalanche. I mean the uh, Escalade that I did. And it fits on this. Okay, so it's good to have a big heavy wrench. Well, it's not a great fit. It kind of fits. So if this isn't particularly fused on there. All right, so, so hammer trick, what people say will work, if you're lucky, in my opinion, is you just take it and you and you give it a whack and hope that it's enough to loosen it. Looks like I may have just gotten it. I did. Look at that. All right. <laughs> I struggled when I did the 1999 uh, Cadillac Escalade. It, it was much uh, rustier than this. And I struggled. I think, that, yeah, I did a video of that. I struggled for hours with that clutch, man until I realized that in a toolbox haul, I had some very large Craftsman um, wrenches. And um, after struggling with it, I had, a, I had a wrench that's specifically made for removing clutch fins, but um, it was too flimsy. So when you whacked it, it wouldn't um, let go. It wouldn't do anything, but this is a heavy wrench and apparently it gripped this just enough that I was able to hit it and get it to just loosen up. step I never look forward to. So this truck has two tensioners and it's got because it's got two bolts. They can see antifreeze dripping. I'm not sure where it's coming from. I assume the water pump. I hope that's what it is. It certainly looks like it. Anyway, you've got a tensioner down here that is the second belt here. I did not know this had a second belt on it. I would have changed that at the same time. I did uh, get a serpentine belt, but I'll have to see if I got the second belt. But so this is the tensioner you want to pay attention to. So I have got a 5 8 socket, which seems to work fine on this. And just, that's all you got to do is pull it and then, well, let me, uh, let me get a better shot and show you all you got to do. It's, it's actually really easy. I'm just going to pull the tensioner and then take the belt off. That's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah. This belt's fine. This belt's not even worn. It's good. I did take a picture, so I'm going to remind you of this. It's good. You can kind of usually figure this out, how it goes. But it's good to take a picture of your belt setup because um, it's sometimes confusing. All right, these are 15 mil sockets. While I'm at it here, I should have taken this, this uh, hose off. I'm going to do that now. You know what I need? This. Because when you get a noose, you can just spin this. 
if you saw my um, video on the uh, 99 Escalade, you saw me use this. Um, but it was actually the one my father gave me, which was uh, a little bit different than this guy. This one is a no off brand that does the same thing, except it doesn't expand. Um, but it's an airline mechanic school, what I then not like to believe about it. There's the thing. Okay. There's three bolts. Something made of motorized one of these. All right, so we've got the replacement water pump. I've got the uh, drawer last gold. I know some people are, may or may not be fans of AutoZone. I've had an AutoZone account for many years. I became kind of a fan when I had to replace the wheel bearing on a 68 Buick Riviera. And to much to my surprise, AutoZone had one. All right, so here is our water pump. Um, this AutoZone door last gold, okay? A couple reasons why this is cool. The bolts, you don't need to replace your bolts. They come in it and they're already in and the gaskets are already on. So all I've got to do is, I got to take these three hoses off still, it looks like, but all I've got to do is, there are a lot of bolts for one of these. One, two, three, four, five, six bolts. All right, so I got to do two, three hoses and then take out six bolts and the water pump should come off. And then I just gotta clean it up, scrape the gaskets and uh, get back to it. Put the new water pump in. Yeah, the water pump's definitely leaking. I can see it. It's, it's a constant drip, it's interesting. Um, because I could smell it and I saw a few drops and I stopped driving this immediately, obviously. It's not my daily driver, so it wasn't a really big deal to stop driving it. No, no. I expect this to, to spill down. You know, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, well, I gotta take this off. This thing's done, yes. It's I guess that's orange antifreeze. That's gonna spill into the pan anyway. Might as well just let it do it. Alright, let's see about these guys. 
they do not seem like they're going to want to move. It's so weird. It's pink. It's not the orange stuff. It's pink. I'm not sure what type of coolant that is. Get these three hoses off. Now I've got six bolts. I think that's all I've got to do to get this off. I don't think there's anything else I need to do. Well, that's pretty easy, actually. Um, I'm not sure exactly when I started. But my guess is 30 minutes ago. Okay, uh, try to get a good angle so you can see. Maybe over here you can see a little bit better. It's tough because it's all under the hood, uh, but. As long as I don't bump that and break my phone, um, essentially I've got to re remove six bolts. They're 10 millimeters. And they're all coming out easy, it looks like. Yep. So you are not going to need to you reuse any of these six bolts because the new water pump came with them. And you know, it's just as well, although these aren't bad. It'll certainly be easier. So what I've got to do next, let me get these bolts out of the way. So it looks like I was just gonna take this apart tonight, but it's a pretty easy job, so I'm just gonna keep going. So I've gotta clean, well, that just came right off, um, but I gotta clean up where the, where the uh, gaskets go. And then, uh, yeah, that just came right off. Wow. Funny. Um, and then uh, we'll put the new one in. I gotta figure out how to get this hose off here too. So I don't think I have a replacement for that. So I'm gonna put this on pause. I'm gonna just pull the water pump out of here and dump whatever antifreeze is in there um, into the pan and then uh, clean these gasket holes up and then I'll be back. All right, so um, I'm gonna put the pump in. Hey everyone, just a brief interruption here. If you're enjoying this content and you'd like to support my channel, and especially if you like cats, I've written a series of chapter books for ages eight and up, fully illustrated, called Flea Biscuit and Friends. The first book in the series is Flea Biscuit Finds a Home, followed by Flea Biscuit Summer Vacation, and finally, 
Flea Biscuits Magic Christmas. They're available at all local booksellers as well as on Amazon.com. I will post a link in the video description. And hey, that's my pitch. Back to the video. Get in the way here, but I can see where this bolt's going. Okay. All right, well, I'm going to say credit where credit's due to um, whoever designed this guy because yeah, it's pretty easy to put it back on. I'm not tightening any of these bolts up. I'm just making sure they're all threaded in. And then I'll tighten them up slowly. All right, that one is threaded to the point where there's some resistance. I'm going to do that with all of them. I'm mean, going to wonder tomorrow why my wrists are sore. And this is going to be why. It's faster. Uh -huh. They are all to the point where they are, I think. Okay, so we're at the point now, we're gonna go a little bit there. A little bit there. We can type them now.
Fine. Let's uh, start hooking hoses up. All shiny and new. So I'm gonna hook these hoses up and then um, put the serpentine belt back on. I gotta put the tensioner back on. So let's hook those hoses up and put the tensioner back on. They want a lot easier than they came off. Attention. I got three bolts for this thing. Let's see where it went. Should put some oil on these for the next guy. All right, the belt's snug. So you go tight, tight. Tight and then done, done, and done. All right, tension is on. All right, let's look at our belt. I'm going to take that. All right, let's look at our belt, see if we can figure out the um, best way to do this belt. I really need some type of arm that hangs over the truck. All right, so here's a good long shot on how to run this belt, okay? So starting from your alternator, down, around, up, down, up to the tensioner, under this, and then there. So I'm gonna hold the camera here for reference. Because it is a little tricky if you forget, and I forgot. All right, we've got the, the belt on. Um, my next step, I believe, is the clutch fan. Yep, let's do the clutch fan. For those of you who want a purist, it is a 36 millimeter on the clutch fan. That's what it actually is.
I'm gonna make sure I get this thing on straight. So this is the actual wrench that's made to take these off. And it's too flimsy to actually do it, but putting it on, it's good to have a 36 millimeter. I don't believe in all the toolboxes I've gone through that I have ever found a 36 mil. Standard equivalent, yes, but I've never found a 36 mil. Okay, now, as you may or may not have surmised, you don't need to make this all that tight because the engine is spinning against it. So when the engine's running, it's uh, turning in the direction that will tighten that. Okay, so it makes it a lot easier to do it that way, uh, which is why you just have to knock it to get it off. Those clamps on. I hope it's real perfect. If I can straighten that out a bit. All right, finger travel. a little bit better than it was mounted. It was mounted really good. Uh, loose.
all of this just snaps into place. So make sure you get pieces lined up. Take it in. Take it in. All right, you get your push pins. They don't like to go in after they've come out. Okay, um, the new water pump is in, and now we've got a guy cooling and running. And very important, you gotta watch the temperature. You put uh, a, an air bubble in the system, and I think that what they call it is burping the system. You may have to do that. Uh, but. I will not be reusing the antifreeze that came out of it. Although, um, to be honest, it looks very clean. Uh, I don't know why it's pinkish purple. Maybe somebody knows that. Somebody may have experience with this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, coolant in here. And I'm going to start it. And... Um, wait for the thermostat, which is new as well, to um, kick on and open it up. And hopefully it'll, it'll stay cool. If not, I, I will have to get the air out of the system. Oh, I still have to put the top piece on. Oh, well, I'll do that. This is universal coolant for all GM systems since I don't know what's in here. And um, I will eventually be doing a complete flush once I realize, once I figure out this thing isn't leaking and everything's okay. All right, so put a gallon in. I think it lost more than that. Incidentally, the popping sound, it's raining out. So even with the uh, closed cell insulation, you can hear it. All right, so um, I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna have to open up the garage door to do that because uh, I don't wanna get asphyxiated in here.
All right, I'm gonna let it warm up, get hot, see if there's any leaks, shouldn't be, and uh, make sure that the temperature gauge stays low and that it's pulling the coolant in. It's probably gonna need more coolant, but I have a second gallon. All good so far. I'm gonna pause the camera. I'll be back in about five minutes. I'm looking into what's going on with these parking lights while I'm waiting for this to get hot, but I, I did just hear the thermostat pull the, the coolant in. I actually heard it gurgle. So um, it's still running cool, but it's pulled all the coolant in. So I'm gonna add a little bit. I think that's probably enough. But um, it's a gallon and a half. I don't think I lost much more than that, but I may have. Because I'm not sure how long it was leaking. All right, well, it's still pretty pretty cool. I, I think it, it's around 160 degrees and it's been about 10 minutes. So I'm going to let it run for a bit longer. It's been about 25 minutes and it's just over 200, which for 25 minutes at idle is, is okay. I'm a little suspicious that it's warmer than it used to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try, um, seeing if I can get any air out of the lines. Really just the one hose. There's not much more I can do without going under it. But, uh, didn't seem like that did much. I could kind of feel it. Um, I'll give it about five or ten more minutes and then see if it stays where it is. It stays where it is, but we're good. I, uh, while I was been waiting, I fixed these lights. Um, I had spare bulbs. It's odd that both sides burned out at the same time. I, I don't know, they were both just flashing. Very weird. All right, it's been another five minutes, so let's see where we're at. And we are idling in a garage, so it could get a little... Oh, it actually is... Uh, it's down. The temperature went down a little bit. <clears throat> um, should blow heat pretty well. Okay, well, it's blowing heat. Don't need that, that's for sure. Yeah, it's, it's hot. All right, well, I am going to just basically say it's done. It's not leaking. Temperature's down, went from 210 or so to 220, down to 200 after I crushed the hose 100 times. And I could feel air moving in it. Maybe that was all it needed. Um, no leaks. After about 30 minutes of running, it's good to go, that which is awesome. All right, so 
that's it. Um, this was only a 90 minute job and then a half an hour to run the test to make sure it wouldn't overheat, that nothing was leaking. And uh, it was easy, it really was. I think there's a f f five, four, five, six, seven plastic pull clips and two bolts and your grill and your fan shroud come off. Take off the, uh, the uh, clutch fan and then you've got six, seven, eight, nine bolts and uh, the tensioner and the water pump are out. It's really pretty easy. So I made this video. Um, I know some of the camera angles probably weren't great. I'm not really fully set up here. I didn't expect to have to do the water pump, but then things like that you never do expect. Uh, one thing I'm gonna add here, and you, you've, you can file this under, um, you know, you could say it's luck or God's watching out for you, but I took this thing just a few days ago I had it out on a 600 mile trip. So I was three hours away from home and, and um, I drove it for an, a couple of days, way, way, very far away. I got back and this weekend, um, I was gonna take it on another long trip. And lo and behold, the water pump went, uh, a, you know, a mile from the house. So that, I don't know how to explain it. That's just really fortunate because it, it, a, a repair like this, you can do it on the road. Um, I would have had to buy some tools because I wouldn't have been able to get the clutch fan off. Everything else I would have had in the back of the truck to do it, I think. But um, it, if you don't do this type of job yourself and you just saw it's 90 minutes to two hours, you'll have it done. Um, this is an expensive repair. I, I would. I wouldn't be surprised if you were charged a thousand dollars to change the water pump. So your, your part, I did buy the most expensive water pump that AutoZone had for ease of use. And, and honestly, it was like $40 more and it was well worth that $40 because it probably saved me a half an hour of, of just playing around with gaskets and gasket cement and all that. I didn't have to do any of that. So for $300, uh, that's the, the pump and the, and the coolant. Um, I did the whole job myself and you can do it. Uh, I hope this video, if, if nothing else demonstrated, there's not a whole lot to, to it. It's just a few simple steps and you can do it yourself. So if you found this video helpful, informative, or just uh, like to watch me work on my truck, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. That helps me, it helps the channel grow. Those of you who have subscribed, I mean, it's fantastic. The channel's growing. I thank each and every one of you. Um, I'm gonna keep doing content like this. This is the first major repair I've done in my workshop, which isn't even set up yet. I was using spare tools from some tool hauls in here because that's what's here. My, my uh, real toolboxes are still uh, in the uh, main garage of the house. I'm gonna be bringing them over to here. But um, by all means, like and subscribe. And thank you to all you who have liked and subscribed. And hey, if your water pump goes, you see water leaking out from under your truck, don't drive it. Don't, don't be one of those people that just keeps pouring water in because your water pump is gonna get progressively worse and then it's gonna really be a problem. And you don't wanna overheat your truck, especially with these new engines. You do not wanna overheat these things. So you can do it. I just showed you how. All you have to do is go out or in this case, go in your garage and get busy. Take care.